Lucifer grew tired of managing Hell, so he abandoned Hell and left the key to Morpheus, aka Dream of the Endless, aka the Sandman. Before leaving, Lucifer sent all the residents of Hell away and closed the gates of Hell. Many of its dark souls went back to Earth and haunted many places. One of these ghosts was a boy who went back to his old school and found a living boy abandoned by his father and constantly tortured by ghost bullies. The ghost boy tried to take care of the living boy but he died of hunger, cold, and infection. The two boys who are now both ghosts became friends and solved different bizarre cases and found many lost souls. So together they became the dead boy detectives. Created by Neil Gaiman, Matt Wagner, and Malcolm Jones III, the dead boy detectives of the Sandman universe are the ghosts of two dead children, Charles Rowland and Edwin Payne, who rather than passing through the afterlife, stayed on Earth and investigated the supernatural crimes. Welcome to DC Nez, and today let's revisit the Sandman universe and get a glimpse on the adventures and origins of the dead boy detectives. Edwin Payne was tortured by bullies when he was alive, then he was murdered by Satan worshippers at his boarding school in 1914. They tried to raise the devil by sacrificing frogs, rabbits, cats, and dead Edwin. His body was hidden in the attic inside a trunk, which is why no one has discovered his body. After which, he went to hell, where he was eternally stalked by an unseen menace through a long and ending corridor for several decades. Forward to 1990, during the season of Miss storyline of The Sandman, Hell was emptied of its residents as Lucifer has quit. As a result of this, the souls of past teachers and pupils of the boarding school who had escaped Hell went back and invaded the school. The name of the school is St. Hilarion's and it was founded in 1802 for the Sons of Army Officers. In modern days, the school is open to anyone who can afford it especially for parents who want their sons educated on British soil. Left by his father, Charles Rowland was the sole living student at the school during these events, as all the other students had gone home for the holidays. His father was an architect who designed hospitals and his mother was long dead. A few of the teachers who stayed behind were supervising him, but one by one they fell victim to various horrors. Edwin aided Charles in avoiding most of the dangers, such as the murderous gang of student ghosts consisted of Cheeseman, Skinner, and Barrow who somehow managed to physically mutilate him. Soon, Charles became delirious, talking to people who were not there, muttering gibberish, and singing fragments of nursery rhymes. Ultimately, despite Edwin's assistance and staying by his side, Charles did not survive and died. He next appeared as a ghost, and Death of the Endless was asking him to go with her to the afterlife. Knowing that he will be leaving Edwin, Charles refused to go with Death. Because of the events in Hell, Death had no time and energy to argue with Charles, so she left them and said she will be back for them when she is no longer busy. They decided to get out of the school and enjoy whatever time left they have before Death takes them. The two boys next appeared during the Children's Crusade crossover. In this story, it is revealed that they have been studying the school's library books and films, mostly children's adventure fiction, in the hopes of learning how to become detectives. In their first case, they were hired by a young girl to find her brother and see what happened to the 40 missing children of a small British town called Flaxdown. In this story, Charles also found out that he can see visions, which helped the duo found the children in a place called Free Country where children never grew old and are free from the abuse and tyranny of adults. A place where there is no age, pain, death, or hunger. The story also showed that they can travel by squishing, which is like teleporting with phasing. In the 2001 limited series Sandman Presents Dead Boy Detectives, Charles and Edwin have decided to set up their own detective agency. Their client, a homeless teenage girl named Marcia, who hires them hoping to find out who's been killing off her fellow runaways and investigate why and how numerous corpses of homeless children had begun washing up on the shores of the Thames. In their research, they met Mad Hetty, a witch who gave them additional information about the events by using her talent at tea leaf reading and told them to go to the tube tunnels. Their first suspect was the creepy Marquis de Marquez who they saw at the tunnel. 
Charles and Edwin attempted to corner the suspect but they lost track of him but he managed to find their office. There, he confronts them, explaining that he's not the miscreant that they're seeking. The Marquis de Marquez told them the story of Gilles de Rai, who is his suspect on the killings and now hiding under the name of Hob Gadling. He then teaches Charles and Edwin how to tap into their powers as ghosts in order to find the elusive Hob Gadling. The Marquis taught them how to hunt, which is releasing a small part of themselves, then sending it to the location of the person they target to hunt. However, the real story is that the Marquis is actually Gilles de Rai, and he was absorbing the youthfulness of children to become immortal and that Hob Gadling is a man born in the 14th century who was given immortality by the Endless. The Marquis used the dead boy detectives to trap Hob Gadling so he can absorb his immortality. With the help of Mad Harry, Charles and Edwin determined the Marquis de Marquez's true identity and intentions. They then rush to find him before he can carry out his sinister plans of killing all the children to absorb Hob Gadling. They almost failed but Mad Harry tricked the Marquis into sucking the death essence of the dead boy detectives and then died. Later, they would also help a client in finding their ghost cat. They would still randomly see death from afar when she is working so they would still run away from her. On one of their adventures, they saved a girl who was part of a failed staged art heist that almost blew her to pieces. This girl is Crystal Palace and the two stayed by her side during her hospitalization. When Crystal woke up, she asked her parents to enroll her in St. Hilarion's. Knowing the dangerous ghosts in St. Hilarion's, Charles and Edwin decided to be her escorts there. Crystal developed a fascination about the deaths of Charles and Edwin in that school and this led to them finding Charles' graveyard. As they are now back in St. Hilarion School, they soon found out that Charles has a half-sister by the name of Clementine who is now an adult female monk. Soon enough, Charles found out how his mother died as told by Sparks, a ghost of a lights expert in the old theater where his mother used to perform. According to him, he heard his mother wailing backstage then saw her climb the rig read a letter while crying and thinking. When she was climbing down, someone swung the gantry rope that she was holding on to. She lost her balance then fell to her death. Sparks got the letter then handed it over to Charles. After further investigation, they unearthed that it was Clementine's mother, Isolde, who killed Charles' mother out of envy. Isolde was pregnant with Clementine when their father left Isolde. Isolde started to hate Charles' mother and it further intensified over the years that led to Isolde killing her. After that, Crystal Palace became an official living member of their detective agency. In modern times, the dead boy detectives acted as judges on the case against Tim Hunter, a young powerful magician who was accused of negligent and reckless use of magic that killed 36 cult members of the Cold Flame. Eventually, they met other children ghosts with different abilities like Melvin, the snake ghost, Jai, a maggot-backed ghost, and Tanya, a knack mother ghost. And although they are just waiting for the day that death would take them, they didn't know that death was just watching over them from time to time. In most of the cases handled by the dead boy detectives, the plots were somewhat placed in connection to certain legends and children's stories and rewrote them, such as the children's crusade crossover made connected to the legend of the Pied Piper of Hamelin, who captured rats then eventually children. To the retold children's crusade, an event in the 13th century that sent 50,000 children to journey towards Jerusalem with the intention of converting Muslims to Christian, but the children actually died or sold into slavery, and to the storyline with Gilles de Rai, a character written to be the real Dracula who studied sorcery, alchemy, and necromancy to learn how to absorb the life energy of various children to keep his vitality and longevity. In 2021, in the third season of the HBO Max series Doom Patrol, the dead boy detectives were portrayed by Sebastian Croft and Ty Tennant. Here, Edwin, Charles, and Crystal reached the Doom Patrol members while they were confronting their purgatories. Dear Lord. Ugh, it's more bandages from there, can't I? Uh, we can hear you. Oh, no. Finally, in the 2024 Netflix series of the Dead Boy Detectives, Charles, Edwin, and Crystal investigate crimes that involve the supernatural, and they are portrayed by Jaden Revery, George Rextru, and Cassius Nelson, respectively. We're ghosts, and we solve mysteries.